Hello everyone, it's me, Dani. Uh, yeah, the first thing I talk about after I've been missing for 450 days is my mental disorder, which is quite fitting, so let's start. Uh, so everyone's ADHD is different. For me, it's uh, executive dysfunction, mostly. So me wanting to do something, knowing how to do it, planning to do it, and still consistently never doing it which then turns into a cycle of like di disappointment, depression, blah, 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 all of that stuff. So that, that's like the biggest thing, me having big ambitions, but being completely incapable to force myself to actually do something for them. Uh, then um, the other thing is fleeting interests. So I would be become interested in something like, a, for example, a video game. And then I play that video game like every day for uh, an unhealthy amount of hours until I lose, like completely lose any interest to that entirely. And I don't play that for like half a year or a year or like never again. The next thing is forgetfulness, which is, well, for me, it's mostly me deciding to do something, uh, but then getting distracted by something small before I actually get to doing it, and then completely forgetting about the first thing, which can be very annoying, but that's like a minor um, symptom, I guess. The next thing is inability to focus on uh, work or studies properly, especially after uh, the first period of novelty is over, then it actually becomes a struggle to either work or study, especially if work is an office job or studies, uh, you, I'm just sitting there and listening to some you know, dry theory, uh, that can get pretty bad and that can affect your work or um, you know, study performance really badly. And it did for me, kind of. <laughs> Next thing is impulsivity, that often I don't really do like big impulsive uh, purchases, like I don't buy fucking skateboards, VR headsets or something. For me it happens with like buying uh, snacks or discounted stuff at uh, grocery stores basically. And the last thing I want to mention is binging. So with ADHD, it's very hard for me to just like enjoy a little bit of something. Once I try something and it's nice, it's, it can be either like a source of entertainment or it can be food. I cannot just eat a spoonful of ice cream and put it back. Very often, more often than not, it, it uh, ends up with me eating like half the tub. And uh, that has, of course, negatively impacted my health. And the other thing is with entertainment, like, yeah, if I find something interesting on YouTube, I usually just, like, I just watch it entirely. Like, I watch it until I'm sick of it, which I think I already mentioned in Fleeting Interests. So, yeah, that's what my type of ADHD is, because everyone else's is different. Somebody's just more hyperactive, I guess. Somebody just completely forgets everything and cannot keep track of anything. So uh, another big thing that I wanted to clarify is that ADHD doesn't give you superpowers. When people say that, they usually mean hyperfixations, but it's wrong because they only notice the good ones, basically. Hyperfixations are similar to binging on drugs or alcohol, but instead of getting direct chemical pleasure, you're clinging to an activity which gives you a dopamine hit because your natural level of dopamine is so low. Unsurprisingly, people with ADHD are also much more likely to end up addicted to drugs because they are much more susceptible to that. Um, basically, what I'm trying to say, there's nothing good about ADHD. It's just uh, another mental disorder, which thankfully you can and should keep under control. So, what helps me manage my ADHD? First of all, and like the most obvious one is meds. There are many different types. I take... Uh, methylphenidate. Uh, it kind of just helped me have a higher baseline of dopamine throughout the day and not uh, have this like weird fucking like dopamine seeking behavior constantly and to be able to uh, concentrate on the stuff that I need to do. So the second very important thing for me, which is as important as the meds, is minimizing the amount of responsibilities that I have to juggle. Because I only have so much mental energy and capacity until I become overwhelmed. 
and I cannot do uh, any more stuff properly. So previously I had to work, I had to go to university, complete all the assignments, coursework, eventually diploma. I had to do the cooking, the cleaning, maintaining and improving the home, keeping track of events, taking care of my health, taking care of my partner's needs and the needs of her three animals, um, working on my relationship where the other person had all the promises and none the motivation herself. I had to socialize occasionally and in between I was struggling to force myself to work on my ambitions like YouTube and well it was basically fruitless as you uh, might have noticed and now a lot in my life has changed so now I only had to well work to provide for myself and myself only uh, I have to do the cooking and cleaning just for me I have my own schedule which nobody can disrupt I only have to maintain my own health. I don't have to keep track of, you know, who's taking uh, which pills, who's taking their vitamins or not, blah, blah, blah. I socialize with friends occasionally. I can do my hobbies, which is actually a positive in terms of bringing dopamine. And I also can make videos, finally. A big part of the responsibilities, which was the university, it was really bad, it was horrible for ADHD, and taking care of another person and a bunch of animals, and not being able to set up my own comfort, getting rid of that was like super important. The next thing is structure, which is, for example, having algorithms for uh, my work tasks, having a sleeping schedule. If you have, for example, evening anxiety, which it often happens to me because I feel like I have wasted a day, right? And I don't want to go to sleep and I end up staying up too late, which you know, fucks everything up. It's very good to have a good, consistent sleeping schedule where you wake up earlier and you even feel like the day lasts longer than it usually does. So having structure for stuff really helps because you're not lost. You're not like wondering, what am I doing next? Another very helpful thing for me is having realistic and measurable goals that I can reach often or every day. Uh, this is, for example, dieting because I can count calories and I can see exactly if I'm doing good or not. This can be exercise through counting reps or sets and like knowing uh, if I did my exercise for the day or not. And well, this is also going to be uploading uh, videos to YouTube, for example, too. Okay, so how did I find out that I had ADHD? And how did I get diagnosed? I had symptoms of ADHD since childhood. I was binging video games, TV shows, food, always doing homework at the last second, etc. In Ukraine back then, no one knew about ADHD basically. So unfortunately, I was simply told that I was a lazy piece of shit. Uh, I dropped out of my first uni after two years and I kept working random jobs till I was 23 and moved to Lithuania to study engineering because I qualified for a grant program. The novelty was helping at first and I was doing really good, but as always my motivation was gradually decreasing. At that time my friend who did uh, have diagnosed ADHD was even telling me uh, that I have it as well, but I was dismissing it as something completely impossible. Uh, I even got an appointment with a psychologist at my family doctor's clinic, partially to confirm that I don't have ADHD, and partially because I was feeling extremely shit because I was making so little progress with the latest video. Uh, unfortunately, the doctor simply said that they don't really diagnose ADHD in adults in Lithuania, and made me do some bullshit memory tests which confirmed nothing and advised me to go to a therapist to help with my procrastination depression. So basically I took that as a confirmation that I don't have ADHD and I kept being clueless. Uh, later my best friend also moved to Lithuania the same way as me. He tried to get his diagnosis uh, confirmed but the doctor couldn't do it and just prescribed him antidepressants. By the time that I was finishing third year of uni and was living with my very very neurodivergent ex, I had been gradually exposed to enough ADHD content on TikTok and YouTube to realize that I obviously had it. Uh, during that time I was already struggling a lot in uni and had a suspicion that I wouldn't get through the last year if I didn't change anything. I found out through my ex that there are doctors who diagnose ADHD, but at that time the number of psychiatric clinics with such doctors in Lithuania could be counted on one hand. 
By that time, I already had friends who got diagnosed in one of those clinics, so I chose the same one. I finally forced myself to call the clinic and got an appointment in three months from then. Uh, a month into waiting, I was offered to try meds by a good friend, and that was an eye-opening experience. That was the most productive day I've had in a while, uh, but unfortunately that was the only time I ever got such a strong effect from it. In August of last year, I went across the country for my appointment, basically told the doctor my entire life story while also trying to seem clueless about ADHD, because I didn't want her to think that I was there to just get stimulants. Uh, she told me she strongly suspected ADHD, no shit. And she sent me away asking to fill out a questionnaire uh, and then email it to her later. I did that very quickly, I ticked like 85% of all boxes on that huge questionnaire, sent it and after a week we already had a phone call discussing all of my answers, I finally got my diagnosis and my prescription for the one and only ADHD medication available in Lithuania. So yeah, that's the journey. Uh, since then I upped my dose and it seems to be somewhat working for me. Now let's talk about the issues with all of this. First of all, you basically have to self-diagnose, even in certain parts of Europe like Lithuania, unfortunately. Second thing is that it is hard to find and then to reach the doctor that you find for ADHD. Since you have ADHD, you have to probably go to a different city, you have to talk to people. You do have these doubts that, well, what if I don't have it? What if I'm just lazy? What if it's not worth it? The third thing is that both medications and doctors are expensive. Uh, you're probably not going to do this through a government clinic because they don't usually have the doctors who can diagnose ADHD and I remember that I had to pay 80 euros uh, for my first appointment while only making 500 euros per month and also meds which cost uh, another like 30 euros every month. So that is <laughs> that's a big uh, money commitment basically. Uh, another thing is that prescription needs to be renewed every month and you have to pay for that every month as well. So I might have 28 euros for my medication and I will also have to pay 30 euros on top of that just for the doctor to confirm that, yep, he still has ADHD. Yep, it didn't magically disappear. Please sell him this uh, stimulant medication. Like, I have no idea why the fuck it is not made. Like, you got diagnosed and you basically just have a recurring prescription. But, uh, well, it is what it is. It sucks. Uh, it's horrible. <laughs> Another thing is that, at least in Lithuania, and probably in many other countries of Europe, there is no variety of medications. Unlike, for example, in the US, where you have fucking everything. You have Adderall, you have Vyvanse, you have Ritalin. Uh, in here, you just have to take Concerta, uh, methylphenidate. Uh, and if it doesn't work for you, because sometimes ADHD meds just don't work for some people with ADHD, if it doesn't work, you're fucked. Another thing which is a small, I guess, inconvenience is that you often have to go through multiple pharmacies to get your meds. They don't really stock them that well. And a thing related to that is that shortages can happen, very much so. There actually was a nationwide, like, three-month-long shortage right when I was finishing my bachelor's degree work and I was graduating. So I had to do all of that while I was having withdrawal from, <laughs> from my medication. It was pretty bad. Another thing is that, like, honestly, I don't even feel that good on my meds. And after taking my meds, I realized that I still don't know what it is to feel normal. Um, and certain days are just straight up anxiety days. And there's, like, there's very little uh, that I can do to change that. But it does make me indifferent to food, which is considered a side effect. But I do like that because it helps my goals. And it does give me some baseline of dopamine, which is very nice. And maybe... If I tried a different medication, I'd like it more. That could also be uh, a thing for the future. But yeah, it, it's not a magical pill. It's not going to give you all the motivation and do the stuff for you, unfortunately. <laughs> And the last thing, which is, I don't really worry about it that much myself, but uh, ADHD meds, especially stimulants, they might have side effects down the line. So there is a chance that I'm shortening my life just to try and have the normalcy which other people have from birth, which sounds very unfair because, well, it is. And now, what should you do if you think you might have ADHD? First of all, you need to complete an actual Diva 5 questionnaire. It's not... Uh, some kind of bullshit internet test that a lot of people take and send each other. It's the thing that actual doctors use here in Europe 
to be able to prescribe you drugs. Uh, this questionnaire will give you a good idea of what is an actual symptom of ADHD and what's not, and you will see how many of them you have. The next thing after you complete your questionnaire and you see that there is a significant amount of symptoms that matches your symptoms, uh, you should find a doctor. You can find doctors on the internet, you can ask um, other doctors for recommendations, you can find them through a word of mouth basically. Find yourself a good doctor. Uh, then you have to get a diagnosis from that doctor. You have to actually go through with it. Don't be a pussy. Go get to your appointment. It's not going to be nearly as scary as you imagine it to be, I promise. And the last thing that I would definitely advise you to do is to thoroughly educate yourself in the process. You need to know what you can realistically expect from your meds and from your therapy. You need to keep working with your doctor and you need to keep trying stuff until you're comfortable with what you have. You also need to remember that getting a diagnosis doesn't mean that you just right now developed ADHD. You should not be sad about that. You've always had it. But now you have it confirmed and you can start controlling your own life instead of being a slave to your condition. So yeah, that's all I had to say about this topic for now. If you have any questions, you can ask away in the comments, I will answer them. Uh, if you found this useful, please like the video, I will notice it and it will make me happy. Subscribe if you like based sociopolitical takes. I'm gonna try a weekly upload schedule for now. Bye bye.